Hey everybody, it's Elliot, fun little pug people here, and today I'm here in my bedroom, and we're interviewing King Buzzo. Are you ready? Ready. Yeah, let's do this. This is our fourth interview together. That's right. This time, no guitars. Yeah, that was that was a fun one. Um, <laughs> Good, yeah. What? Uh, so you want to go over your collection? We're gonna go over your collection, and then we're gonna talk about your new album. So uh, sounds good. I can. I mean, I'm at my house right now, and as you can kind of see, um, one of our one of the things we have is a lot of stained glass in our house. See that's it? Awesome. That looks cool. Yeah. I like right? the owl. The, the sinister owl. You know? That's awesome. And, uh, uh, we have a bunch of it, and the main reason we started get, we've been in this house about since 1996. Awesome. And um, the reason we started we started putting in stained glass was because uh, uh, that side of the house faces our neighbors, so we always had the the blinds drawn. And we and so it was just useless. And we go, we got to figure out a way to have so we can not see them. They can't see us, but it's still like a window. <laughs> My wife's like, "How about um, we do a stained glass?" And so we found a guy that made that normally makes church windows, and he was very excited to be doing something that wasn't the twelve stations of the cross. <laughs> so. Um, uh, uh, as time, you know, they're not cheap to do, but as you know, we've been in here you know, more than 20 years, so we would do one and then save money and do one later and then do another one. Think what we could do. We have a whole bunch now, so I really love it. I think it it's looks great. incredible. It looks yeah. incredible. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool to have it. And, and during the day, they look amazing inside, and at night, they look amazing outside, you know. Nice. And the light shines out, so it's a really cool thing. I really, 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 really enjoy it. It's like a, a, almost like a, depending on the light, it changes throughout the day, and it's like a living painting, sort of, you know, in nice. glass. It's really great, really great. So the first thing we'll do is, um, this is, I don't know if you can see it really good. Uh, I don't know where I have to go. I okay. That's awesome. This <laughs> is, it's a, a, we got it in um, 1996, says, it says on it, and um, it's a, a, a Walt Disney Frozen in Ice. <laughs> and he's got the ears on, so they call it the uh, a Walt sickle. Wow! So we got this around the same time we moved into the house. So as you can see, how could you pack? Couldn't pass it up. So, uh, exactly. Oh my god! I don't have one of those. You know? I don't know how many of these they made, but it was totally great. And I thought it was really funny because you know the old story is is that um, Walt was frozen in ice and maybe somewhere in the park. You know, so that was the first thing. We, we like all kinds of things like that. That's cool. Yeah, it is cool. Um, any questions about it? <laughs> uh, where did you get that? Did you get that at Disney? No, oh, hell no. <laughs> Disney would never sell something like this. It was some artist. I can't remember where we got it. It was at like an art show or something, and they were selling them. And so uh, we were like, oh, yeah, yeah, we got to have that, you know? So, but we were super into it. Disney, Disney, Disney stuff, you know? Um, uh, uh, the movies, um, all of his books, reading about him, he's such a weirdo. And uh, that that story, I think, is really good about him being frozen. I'd like to think that he is frozen somewhere, in, maybe somewhere in Disneyland. That'd be it's a good thing to think about. <laughs> That's kind of creepy at the same time. You're just walking through well, Disneyland. Disneyland is kind of creepy. Have you, ever been, have you ever been to Disneyland in California? No, I have not been to Disneyland. I haven't been to any of the Disney parks at all. Oh, yeah, to, when it, uh, everything opens up. I would highly recommend it. It's uh, uh, the most psychedelic place you could ever go, I would say. And um, don't, it's like, you know, you just want to uh, approach it with the idea that you're interested in having fun and not, uh, don't get caught up in too many of the other details about what people don't like about it. Yeah. Anyway, so the, uh, next thing I have is a uh, another piece of art. It's a Gary Baseman painting. I don't know if you know Gary Baseman. I haven't heard of him, but he, that looks awesome. That looks like uh, that could be one of your album covers. <laughs> Certainly could. We're huge, huge fans of Gary's. Um, Gary actually did, a, we had a record called Bride Screen Murder, and we did a limited editions, hundred, uh, a thousand of them with each hundred was a different artist, and they did a print that my uh, Mackie printed. Uh, a letterpress print and he submitted some of the art for it and so there's a hundred records with his print on the back of it so so um and i got i got this i don't know how long ago it would have been um gosh i don't know uh 
uh, early 2000s from my buddy Tom Hazemeyer, who put out that King Buzzo record I see there. The yeah, back. that's uh, that's from the very first time we met. We had you sign yeah. that in the street. Right. We thought yep. that that's right. And uh, uh, I, that same guy put that out. He used to have an art gallery. Awesome. And he um, did an art show with uh, with um, Gary and uh, gave me a crack at buying some of the stuff that he had there. So I, I bought a bunch of stuff from him over, over the years. So Anyway, we really love Gary Baseman. I think he's great. Um, he's a genius in his simplicity and um, uh, he's a real character. I like the, uh, you know, the dunce dog with the uh, angel flying out of his back. Yeah. I think it's an angel. You know? But that usually <laughs> hangs in our living room, so. Excellent. Any questions about it? What do you enjoy more, being a fan of art or your own, making your own art? Oh, this, I'm not... I, I'm not an artist the way those guys are um, at all. I, you know, music would be the art that I'm in, <clears throat> but um, I like to surround myself with stuff like that. I think it's a. Uh, uh, I don't understand people who, who, who. I guess I can understand it, but it doesn't it doesn't stimulate me? I like to be surrounded by all kinds of junk, wherever I'm at, and especially where I live, and uh, uh, somehow it, it, it whether it's books or movies or. Um, art or you know just junk of one form or another if it interests me it it gets my creative juices going it gets yeah. me thinking along those lines and i think there's something about having real art like a real painting a real sculpture a real you know real windows like this that that really um when you can get to the point uh that you can start buying stuff like that i would highly recommend it or like that record that record the king buzzer record it's silk screen it's like you know really cool vinyl to me it's like that stuff is entry level into buying art you know yes that's the way we approached it when we made those records and we still do stuff with tom all the time and that's that's our that's our, our mo along those lines you know that's how we that's how we operate we're selling people little pieces of art that they're going to take home that aren't something you could just go down to the record store and buy you can't buy it from anybody except for tom or us they're not distributed so if you have one it's actually really special yeah, exactly. It makes you. It get, I know what you mean by how if you're surrounded by stuff, it gets your creative juices going. Because I have a bunch of records. I have your. Yeah. I have the cool pumpkin. It gets me excited to want to do things. It makes me want to yeah. get, play guitar. It makes me want to draw myself. Yeah. Uh, I know that feeling. So, yeah, I grew up with very little of that kind of stuff. I mean, my parents didn't have very much money, and so as I got older, I realized that that's what I wanted to do. I missed all that when I was a kid. So we had some stuff, but we didn't have a whole hell of a lot of stuff. We lived pretty. You don't know, really think about it when you're a kid, but you know we didn't. Um, I'm trying to make up for it now. You know? <laughs> okay, next thing. This is a early. Oh, that's creepy. It's an early 1960s beatnik doll called a, a Scuba Doo doll. And I think it's from, I'm looking at the thing, it's from like the 1963, I think. I think, let me see, it says 19, I know it's the early 60s. 1964. So this doll is exactly the same age as me. <laughs> Both of us. And see, she's got, she's a beatnik doll. So she's got these really cool black, black stockings on and, uh, um, and, and she's got her vest and uh, uh, there was also a brunette version that we had first. But what was cool about this one, it took us a long time to find it, was that this one actually works. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, she's not working too good right now. Let me see if I can get it. Is still... What the hell? <laughs> yeah, so she talks. That thing is creepy. It, it eyes look like it stares into your soul, too. It's like 56 years old, it still kind of works. I guess so. I'll get to work here in a second. Hold on. It's even more psychedelic now that it doesn't work that good. Yeah. I dig that crazy beat. One more. Oh, one more. This is Scat. So it took us a long time to find one that worked, and we actually put her on one of our records. That Scooby Doo, Baba Doo, Baba Doo, Baba. It's on a, a, the uh, uh, Walk with Love and Death record on the soundtrack part. Awesome. And so, uh, yeah, I love it. And see, she's got really cool eye makeup on. See, she's, 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 <laughs> Dude, got, that's uh, creepy. 
We have we have a couple of love of it like that, but nothing that that compares to that. That thing is insane. This thing's great. You can find them once in a while. Most people don't know what they are. And you know, for a long time she worked. I recorded all of the things that she says. So I have all those recorded already, yeah. saved out. But she's extremely cool. Yeah. I love stuff like this. And she, you know, we're the same age. She looks like she's doing a little better. <laughs> Blonde, beat Nick doll from the early '60s. Can't can't go wrong with that. You know, look could be better. Um, my dad uh, just went out and got some uh, some records. Same artist. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a uh, Tom Hazelmeyer. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the Clown series. Yeah. <laughs> just oh, so good. Yeah, I gotta love that. We did a whole bunch of those. Um, um, yeah, we've done. I think at this point we've done over way over 107 inches. I don't know how many 12 inches. I don't know how many EPs. I have no idea. Um, hundreds, hundreds, and hundreds of releases. You know, in the 30 plus years. Um, um, and more to come. We got a new one that just came out, a reissue of the uh, Electro Retard record. And we have one that's going to be coming out soon with an uh, uh, EP with us, with uh, Mark and Steve from Mud Honey. Oh, nice. That is cool. That came out really cool. I can't wait for people to hear it. It's really cool. Mm-hmm. All right. So the next thing is um, there's this artist. Skinner, I don't know if you know him. He did um, he did a couple of Mastodon records, or he did at least one Mastodon record. But he started painting. I didn't know known him for a long time, and he started painting on uh, old bottles. And so That's this cool. is uh, this is one of his uh, ones I just got from him. So it's an old old bottle. You can tell it's old because it doesn't have a screw top. It has a has a uh, uh, you put a stopper into it instead. That's how you can tell how old bottles are. Um, and it's uh, uh, he just paints right on them, monster heads. So I just thought that was the coolest thing. Um, Barry like, McGee used to do this. It looks like a what was that? horror movie character. Like yeah, that just... one's good. And then this is another one. I have like five of them. This is oh, one. that it's was like... cool. <laughs> but see, it's got the screw top, so the bottle's not quite as old. But you get the idea. It didn't matter. It doesn't matter to me. I think it's great. I have like five or six of them. So really cool skinner's a really great guy you can go online and get this stuff is very reasonably priced um uh he's a he's a really cool guy a really good artist and uh, uh i was on online uh, i was on his painting show once oh nice years ago that was cool yeah um and all we did is just bullshit and well i screwed up on a canvas and he uh, actually knows how to paint <laughs> <laughs> that was cool well, he's a lot of fun so anyway those are good so. One more thing. This is a one of my favorite artists. This is this guy Cause, and this is from I think two thousand, early two thousands. It's a, the Michelin Man with a skull thing, but he comes with a bag. And these are extremely rare. And uh, um, I have bought most of this, most of his things. Certainly not all of them, but uh, uh, um, this vinyl toy, uh, uh, vinyl toy. Uh, uh, World is uh, something that we have kind of based our the record collecting, like that King Buzzer record. Their attitudes towards how they do this stuff versus is, is kind of how we've kind of adopted a lot of those principles towards how we do records, you know. And I think this stuff is absolutely extraordinary, hundred hundred percent. From the first thing he ever did to you know the bag to, and I think he's doing huge projects now, huge. But we've always been into it, uh, especially me and Tom. I think Tom kind of turned me on to him. And then whenever I would see something like this come out, I would grab it. They're usually very limited um, to a few hundred or maybe less than a thousand of them. And they, just like our stuff, they don't really go too much direct to toy stores. They do a little bit, but um, you really have to be on it. Oh, how old are you, by the way? I am 15 years old. Okay, because this, this, this has a warning on it. It says, not suitable for children under 13 years of age. <laughs> okay, so I'm <laughs> You're in. So, so if a 12-year-old kid had this, it would be dangerous. <laughs> anyway. What do you well, think of the favorite toy in your collection out of all of them? Out of these ones? Mm-hmm. Or everything? Whatever you want. Everything out of those top five? Oh, out of these, um, probably I really love the Walt thing, and I really love the Scooby Doo doll. Actually, I like all this stuff, the stuff that I have here. But my collection of everything I have, my very favorite toy is this toy called the Great Garloo, but it's really big. 
And so it's from the early 60s. I couldn't, I didn't want to drag it, drag it down here, but you can look it up. The Grey Garlic, that's my all-time favorite. I'm looking for one that's in the box, but they're extremely expensive, and I, I haven't had the uh, guts to blow that kind of money on one. But it's a kind of a looks like a uh, the Jolly Green Giant sort of. Oh, at night. It's my all-time favorite. I've got uh, I've got a few of those uh, out of the box, and I've got uh, Son of Garlou too, a little one. They're all hard to find. Um, usually messed up because they're from the early '60s, so kids had them, so they break that stuff. You know, nothing lasts. And so, if you can find one, I'd really, really, really like to have one in the box. But you know, I'm uh, uh, still looking. So now I'm going to be talking about Gift of Sacrifice. Uh, we're going to be talking about it comes out august 14th 2020 it's available for pre-order now uh, i have to say i love your voice on that one i have a digital copy so i was able to listen to the entire thing oh it's great it's done on santa base is awesome as well i love how it sounds beautiful evil and different all at the same time it's like yeah. just perfect mix yeah yeah thank you um i'm really happy with it um uh I'm really glad Trevor Dunn was able to do on it, to play on it. Right now, I'm supposed to be on tour, right, this very minute. You know, we're supposed to, we were supposed to, the record is, should, but it came out like a week ago, and I think our tour was starting like May 12th or something like that. The whole thing canceled, all of it. And um, I don't know when I'll be playing live again. I, mean, I have no idea um, when that sort of thing will make sense again. I'm a little skeptical about how well any of this will work. Um, I'm a little worried about the economic repercussions of all of it uh, for everyone. I think it's going to be uh, probably a lot harder than people imagine it will be to dig our way out of this thing. Um, and so it's definitely the weirdest thing I've ever lived through. Uh, but, you know... Your family pulls together, like me and my wife, Mackie. We live here with our dogs, and we're we're not we're not alone. So when it was the lockdown was at its most, we um, were together the whole time. That was really cool. Um, and I think at the end of this whole thing, it will probably be the longest period of time we will have been together without me leaving on tour. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Oh, I'm really, I'm really happy that you're, you've been so enthusiastic um, for all these years. Um, I think when I met you it was about six, six or seven years ago. I think well, so. Yes. Yeah, and um, outside in the street. <laughs> we yeah, we took that picture too. Yes, uh, um, and I'm glad you're still enthusiastic about it. Thank you. Um, uh, try to stay as level-headed as possible and realize that, you know, probably things like drugs and alcohol are, are only going to make things worse for you. <laughs> I'm staying away from that. I'm staying away from that. Huh? I'm staying away from that stuff. I would stay away from it if I were you. you know, um, having had uh, my own jaded history along those lines, none of that stuff ever did me any good. Thank you so much for doing this with me. I had a ton of fun. Uh, hopefully everything gets better. I'm really looking forward to Gift of Sacrifice when that comes out. We're definitely going to okay. get it right when it comes out. Well, awesome. Thank you well, so thanks much. Thanks so much. It was, a ple it was a pleasure talking to you again for That's the fourth beautiful. time. I know. I love it. Uh, all right. You guys be good. You too. You too. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.